Hi everyone, it's me, Violet Chachki. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna do something, go back in time, go back, back, back to my roots, and review my top 10 all-time favorite looks on the runway of RuPaul's Drag Race, a show that I was once upon a time a part of. Let's get into it. <laughs> So, starting with season one, my favorite look and one of my all-time favorite drag queens, Chanel. If you haven't seen season one of RuPaul's Drag Race, you are truly missing out because that's when it was like the best it's ever been. Um, I love Chanel because she literally is convinced that she is the best in the world. And like, I relate to that on a spiritual and deep and meaningful level. This look is so, so, so good. I think this episode she thought she was gonna go home or something. Or maybe it was like best drag or like, I don't know. But she comes out juggling, which is just so extra, so ridiculous. Um, I love it. The hair, the makeup, so ridiculous, so amazing. So early 2000s. It's like what, 2007, 2008? And she's wearing this like ridiculous stripper one piece thing. Um, with like body jewelry down the back, I think. Yes, all these like chains all over her, these big stupid ass um, like dream catcher rhinestone earrings. One of my favorite lines from her is like, I have over $25,000 worth of rhinestones and costumes with me, 16 pairs of shoes. Like that's so me to start listing off like how many pairs of shoes I brought with me to something. Um, I don't know, I love her, I love this look. I would never wear it, but I think it's amazing. I think it's so cool and special and unique, and I think that Chanel as a, as a drag artist is like my kind of drag queen, for sure. Um, one of my favorite parts besides Chanel's entrance look where she wears a thong, and I love when they do the absolute Mandarin challenge and she's orange, and she goes, Miss Absolute Mandarin. It gives me um, very father beans from uh, Sounds of the Lambs when he goes, I had it with a nice side of father beans. Um, besides that, I love when she's getting critiqued and the judges are giving her critiques and she's kind of like, um, they ask who, who do you want to go home? Which of the other contestants should go home? And she nominates herself. So dramatic, so extra. And they're like, why, why? She's like, well, no one, no one has told me that I'm beautiful. And you know, I feel like I'm just giving it my all and I'm giving you 100% and nobody has told me that I am beautiful. And I am beautiful. I'm beautiful on the inside, I'm beautiful on the outside, and no one has said it. And the judges are just kind of like, is she crazy? Like, is this picture real? And she like literally is crazy. And then RuPaul is like, Chanel, you are beautiful. And I, I thought we told you and, uh, I'm such a, thank you, thank you. That feels good. I am beautiful. And it was like, she was so, she acted like that was totally normal. It was amazing. It was truly, truly amazing. She, it's Chanel's world and we're just living in it. Raja, season three, The Money Ball. Um, when I was watching the show, I first got into it, I think Raja's season three, I'm not, around that time, maybe it was season two, but, um, this look still slays to this day. So good, all the, I mean, taking something unconventional like Monopoly money and making something so elegant, so refined, that still to this day, I think, stands as like one of the best made garments on Drag Race. Uh, I think she's such a creative force to be reckoned with. I love Raja, I love uh, that she's been a drag queen for such a long time and been doing fucking with gender for so long. She's also a Gemini, which is, uh, I'm also a Gemini. So we have this sort of like dual personality, creativity. Um, I, I love her as a person and I think this look is just fucking fierce. I think she's a fierce drag queen, a fierce entertainer. I think this was like probably her at her height. I mean, this was so quality, so well executed. Um, I'm like jealous that I wasn't on her season because we would have been like a strong competition. I wish I had more balls and more, more design challenges in my season because I think they're so fun and they really show someone's um, I and reference and the respect that they give to the artistry of drag and the creativity that goes into it. And I think Raja's definitely one of the people that has that reverence and that respect for drag. Oh shit. Season four, Sharon Needles. 
Sharon Noodles, I love her. Post Apocalypse Kaka. Um, her post apocalyptic runway look. I think this is one of the most definitive moments in Drag Race history. This look changed the game. Like, changed the game completely. I think no one had ever seen or thought of drag as being anything than just being, you know, who's the prettiest. And um, this brought in a whole new train of thought that you could be weird and dark and macabre and spooky and, mar and still marketable and still relatable um, and still have people cheering for you. Um, she was definitely the underdog of the season and she won and this look totally changed so many people's perspectives on what drag is and what drag could be. Um, and it was just such a punk move to come out and have your whole, open your mouth and have blood gushing out, but also still give like a really feminine, fierce look. Um, and it's something that she made also. I think it's so good, so definitive for drag in general. Definitely one for the history books. I love it. Good job, Sharon. Ugh, also from the same episode, I think this look is super, super underrated. LaShawn Beyond is so underrated. She's such a visionary, and she's also the one who had the whole post apocalyptic caca um, bit, and she didn't know what post apocalyptic meant, and that's really cute. But not even knowing what post apocalyptic means, I think she turned out a really, really fierce look. I think it's so cool she has like this sort of Grace Jones world on her head moment going on. She's got all these different textures. Um, and fabrics happening. It gives me very Galliano uh, for Dior in the 2000s. The Eternal Reference. Um, it's just so good. I think it's so underrated. I think Sharon definitely stole the show this episode, so her look kind of got pushed to the back. But there's, there's a couple other looks that she turns that are just so good. I think she's really good, has a really good eye. I think she's super underrated. Um, and I love this look. I think it's it's really, really fierce, uh, and for not knowing what post-apocalyptic me meant, I think she really turned it out, so kudos to you, LaShawn. Detox on TV, season five, the theme was favorite body part. Um, Detox's body, okay, let's talk about it. Her ass, I've seen her ass in plenty of clothes, mostly sweatpants, Gucci sweatpants. But I love that she chose to feature her backside. I love anything corseted. I love sort of dark and vampy moments. I remember when I was watching season five and I was um, really, really, really rooting for her. I remember watching, well, I remember watching season five um, at a gay bar with all of my friends and a commercial for this Absolute program, Rudunit, Absolute campaign came on Rudunit and it was about who stole Sharon Needle's crown and I was actually sitting at the bar with the person who did steal it. So I remember that vividly, but I also vividly remember um, standing Detox and being like, she's amazing, she's gonna win, she's so high fashion, she's so chic, she's elevated, it's what I see drag being. I think this is the first time I really related to a drag queen, uh, seeing them and being like, oh, okay, that's like more like kind of what I would wanna do and what I do. Um, so I really always really love Detox, and this is such a cool dress. It gives me a little John Willie vibes, gives me some fetish vibes. It's definitely got that sort of like raunchy, late 80s, early 90s fetish situation that I live for. I know Detox lives for that era as well. So, good for you, drunk auntie. Love you. Coco Montrese, season five, theme is telenovela realness. And she's got sleeves like this, and she's like, So good. I mean, I think that's the only reason that I really truly love it. I think it's cute. It's a cute jumpsuit all along, but I think when you really, when I really fell in love with it was with the movement, and she really like whipped those sleeves around like it was no one's business. Um, so good, so iconic. I think I'm not really into orange or tangerine at all, and I think she really, really sold it. And I think it's a really smart way to do sort of a Latin look. It's not typical, it's not Flamenco, it's not salsa, you know, we're doing like this sort of like mango, it's gorgeous, I love it. I think it's a really, really cool way to do, to accomplish the theme. Trinity K. Bonet, season six, Atlanta, fellow Atlanta native. Um, again, I think Trinity is super underrated for her aesthetics. This runway theme was black and white and she comes out as 
a bunch of dominoes with this like gorgeous sort of train on the back. It's very pageanty, very presentation, but I love it. I love it. I think it's super kitschy, super camp, but again, still elegant, refined, beautiful. It's like this gorgeous gown, gorgeous silhouette. She's really selling it. I think at the end of the runway, she kind of like takes some dice and like throws them or something. Um, I love that. I love the delivery. Uh, I think she just had some of the best looks of her season and it was like overshadowed by some comedy queens and I, I want to give her the props that she absolutely deserves. I love this dress. I would totally wear it. Um, so props to you, mama. I love it. Benja La Creme, season six. The theme is Animal Kingdom and she chooses to come out in what I'm considering to be one of the most avant-garde looks on Drag Race. It's sculptural, it's otherworldly, it's totally unwearable, um, and she comes out on all fours as this sort of like beetle, and it's just so cool. I mean, thinking about the construction that went into this costume, and then her execution and delivery, so cool. Such an amazing piece. Um, I was really blown away when I saw it. And uh, I love Benjela, she's an amazing burlesque performer. This is probably part of some one of her amazing shows that she produces. Uh, such, and, and to pick like an insect as your animal kingdom is I think really cool as well. I think it's super easy to be like, I'm gonna be a cat or a panther or something, but to pick an insect like this um, was cool. And then to execute it so flawlessly and so properly, I think a lot of the newer seasons could take notes. I think having a concept is great, but I think executing it is even more important and knowing what you're capable of and, and knowing that you can execute something flawlessly. And I think this is such a good example of flawless and smart execution. Oh shit, season seven sister, Kennedy Davenport, Tony the Tiger on crack. Uh, the theme was Death Becomes Her. And let me try to recite what she sold her costume as. So Trey didn't like the session, so he gutted me like a fish, and then lit me on fire but I had crystallized in the embers and risen as a glamazon ready for the runway. Poetry. I mean, honestly. If, I think that monologue alone sold this look and that is why it's so iconic. It's so bad that it's good. I mean, I remember her putting on and me being like, you ain't, you ain't winning, girl. Like, you ain't getting shit with that, but now, I'm like, that was brilliant. I mean, and she glued all these rhinestones to her face for no reason. Like, no reason at all. She had no reason, she had no idea what she was doing, girl. She doesn't do weird, weird drag or different drag or kind of, it's just pretty much like gowns, pageantry, bodysuits, like these are the categories. So to do something that's kind of dark and macabre like death and how does someone who uh, is so clean and polished and pageantry portray death and how would their character die. Um, I love it. I love it. This is what she came up with. I think that's why it's so iconic. Uh, so, so bad that it's good and I truly love that for it. I love, I love that. Katya, another season seven sister. Um, the one and only Katya, all-star season two. Runway theme is pants on the runway and I actually wore pants on the runway in season seven and I got some shade for it. They were YSL tuxedo pants. I wore them for the final runway um, to kind of look professional and give a best drag look, a little androgyny. And then they became a theme. Um, not that I was the first to wear pants, but I definitely was critiqued for wearing pants on the runway. And this is such a cool look. I mean, again, it's almost that, the way she's selling it, um, just the confidence that when she walked out and she kind of did that fashion headache pose, and she had the can I talk to your manager wig. Um, and then the suit itself is really well made, you can tell. I think it's a vintage Mugler suit. And Mugler was known to make suits, especially power suits, 80s, 90s, um, which is what I think this is from. She killed it. I mean, the, the presentation alone, I think, is what killed it. The posing. Um, I'm not really into the shoe. Yeah, I don't know about this cheap yellow plissia. Le plissier. But again, the shoe with the earring, okay, I'll give it to you, you matched. I love it, I think she looks amazing. I think it's such a cool way to interpret pants on the runway. So that is my 10, top 10 favorite looks from RuPaul's Drag Race. But we couldn't do a video without doing a final bow to Mother Ru. Mother Ru, 
This dress, she was also, again, my season. Uh, theme was ugliest dress. She never really dresses on theme for the runway themes, which I don't understand. I feel like if you're asking the girls to do a theme, I'd like to see how a pro, a professional drag queen, uh, executes the looks as well. But she did, I believe, take the theme into consideration on this episode, which I love. Um, she's got a picture of her, I mean, th to me, this is camp. She should have worn this dress to the Met Gala. Uh, she's got a picture of herself airbrushed naked on this like velvet um, dress. It's amazing, I don't know who, maybe it was Zaldi. I love this dress, I love the afro that matches. I think it's so cool. Um, I've never seen a dress like this before on a drag queen or really ever. Um, so, so cool. I wish she would do more dresses like this, like really thought out and intentional. Um, and I think that's one of the main, reason, main reasons why I like it is because you can tell there was thought and intention put behind this look. Uh, she just looks amazing. It's so cool. I think she definitely looked, some of her best looks are on my season. Um, so props to you, mama. All right, and that is it. It was so hard to choose. Just 10 Drag Race looks, but I love it. My sisters always come through. Amazing looks. I think Drag Race definitely holds its own weight in the fashion world, uh, and I love that. I love that for us. I love that as our journey. I hope you loved this video, and I hope you subscribe, like, comment, and share. Let me know your favorite Drag Race look in the bottom, besides my looks, of course. Let me know your other favorite drag looks, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you stay tuned for more fashion, beauty, and glamour. Mwah!